Hi, my name is Savannah and I'm a sophomore at the University of Delaware studying sports medicine. Today I'm going to be sharing the story of Eliza Ann Greer, who is the first um, registered black female physician in the state of Georgia. I'm going to be sharing her story um, with a mixture of hand-drawn and um, uh, sourced images from the internet. Um, just because I myself am a visual learner and I know that um, just getting loads of information with nothing to look at is very boring. So I hope you guys enjoy my hand-drawn images. Uh, keep in mind that I'm not Picasso. This first image that I'm drawing here is of a young Eliza, presumably about five years old. Um, this would have been in 1869 after her family had moved from Mecklenburg, North Carolina to Atlanta, Georgia. Um, not much is known about Eliza's childhood. Uh, what we do know is that she was born to enslaved parents in 1864 and then a year later when slavery was abolished. Um, it took her family four years after that to be able to um, move out of North Carolina and to Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm drawing um, this young Eliza here with her hair worn naturally and a red um, headband or hair wrap on um, to show um, an expression of her strength and her power that she had at this age. She was going through um, a lot uh, as a young child and, and moving and from her parents going from enslaved to being uh, free and now having to look for work in the midst of segregation and Jim Crow laws. So this young girl, um, this young girl had to be tough. So I wanted to show um, her strength and, and kind of capture that. Um, her hair, I think, is the biggest part of this, her hair and the color of her head wrap. Red is kind of a color that we associate with um, strength, power, resilience. So I wanted to um, include that in, in this image and have emphasis on that being really the only color highlighted. And then I really wanted to have the emphasis on her hair just because uh, natural beauties are, are always empowering and um, what better way to express a young black girl's strength than through her unique hair. So this uh, next image is just a really quick um, crayon sketch of a schoolhouse and this image, um, while it not being the best, uh, represents uh, two things. Um, one being Eliza's time, uh, her first years in education, she enrolled in the normal department at Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee in 1884, graduated in 18. Uh, 91 and then moved to Augusta, Georgia, where she actually got her first job teaching um, at the first school for black children, which was founded by um, the lovely Lucy Craft Laney, um, who is pictured here. In 1893, uh, Greer was accepted into the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania, and in 1897, she graduated with high honors. Um, this university later became a part of Drexel University and at the time Eliza was one of the few non-white graduates, several others being pictured here, Anand Dubai Joshi, Kai Akami, Sabata Slambuli, and Susan LaFleche. However, despite Greer graduating with high honors, her time spent at the Women's Medical College was far from ideal. She had to alternate years of schooling with years of picking cotton to save up for her classes. 
This meant that her time spent in school was extra long because of her time spent working in between years of schooling. For this reason, Greer originally applied for financial aid when she applied to the university, saying, quote, I have no money and no source from which to get it, only as I work for every dollar. So despite offering to work for her scholarship and also receiving a recommendation from the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Pennsylvania, Greer was still rejected from her financial aid request. This image depicts Greer's time spent studying um, in medical school as well as her time spent working in cotton fields to pay her way through medical school. And it really shows her work ethic and the balance between the two. After she graduated in 1897, in 1898, she moved back to Atlanta, Georgia, where she officially became the first registered black female physician in the state of Georgia. Eliza is quoted saying, I traveled to Philadelphia, studied medicine hard, obtained my degree, and have returned to Atlanta, where I've lived all my life, to practice my profession. Some of the city's greatest white doctors have welcomed me and promised me an equal shot in the profession, and that is all I ask. Due to Jim Crow laws and segregation, Eliza had a hard time finding work, so just a year after she became registered in 1898 in Atlanta, Georgia, she relocated to South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina in 1899, where she specialized in her passion of obstetrics and gynecology. Work was still hard to find, so she had to um, get dual income by keeping connections with the hospital and training school for nurses in Charleston, South Carolina, and was a teacher on the side. Then, unfortunately, in 1901, Eliza Greer fell ill to influenza and was unable to see patients for six weeks. This put a damper on her financial standings and her practice. She reached out to Susan B. Anthony, a women's suffragist at the time, asking if she had any help that she could give her. She referred her to the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania, who had already let Eliza down as a student. Now as an alumni, they let her down again, not providing her with any financial aid despite her circumstances. Eliza was then forced to move in with her brother, Richard Edgar Greer, who was also a doctor in Albany, Georgia at the time. And unfortunately, after only being there for less than a year with her brother, she passed away at the age of 38 after only practicing medicine for eight short years. She's quoted saying, when I saw colored women doing all the work in cases of childbirth, and all the fee going to some white doctor who merely looked on, I asked myself, why should I not get the fee myself? <laughs>